Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today we're going to do another legal question, find the town judge. So this is a very interesting question, and what we're given is a 2D um, array here, 2D list of uh, people in the trust matrix. And the way this array works is um, in our first position of the matrix, we will have someone, person one, who trusts person two. So we can denote this as person one, trust person two and we're also given the total number of people which in this case is two, two people person one and person two and we are given three conditions to find out who our judge is so the first condition is the town judge trusts nobody so here we can see that there are no um dependencies for two so two does not go out and trust anyone else it's only one that trusts two and everyone except the town judge trusts the town judge. So in this case, we only have two people and this person one does trust person two. So that means two is the town judge here in this case. And um, there is exactly one person. So what this third condition means is that there are, there's only one judge in this town. So we won't have a case where there are multiple judges. Okay, so let's let's look at another example um, to clarify these three conditions. Great, let's look at our second example here where n is three. So that means we have three people and one trusts three and two also trusts three. And three does not trust anyone because our array ends here. So that's all the mappings we have here. Um, so what do we notice here? That in order for 3 to be the judge, 3 needs to have the votes or the trustability of these other two people, person 1 and person 2. So from this, we can uh, get the idea that in order for 3 to be the judge, um, 3 needs to have um, the n minus 1 people's trusts because 3 there won't be a case that's given to us where um, three maps to three or three trusts itself. So um, the the number of trusts that three needs to be a judge is n minus one. So that is one observation we need to uh, notice from this case to solve this problem. And then the second observation is, well, three should not have any other dependencies. So three should not map to anything else in order to be the judge. Great. So if I have a way to know um, how many people I am trusting and how many people trust me for each person, then I can check who the judge is by just meeting the condition if that person uh, doesn't trust anyone and n minus one people trust that person. So those are the two conditions essentially we need to check. So if I had an array here, um, which is the trusting array, so I will just write, this is my trusting array. So who that person is trusting is denoted here. So just ignore the zeros because um, the person count starts from one. So it's like one, two, n. And so I've written the indexes here uh, for, for clarity. So we can see that, okay, well, in this case, our person one um, trusts three. So we just remove that person's um, credibility by one because they're not going to be the judge. So they're trusting three. And then um, in our position two, we have, okay, we have our person two trusting three again. So, well, our person two also loses credibility. And then in our person three, we don't have anyone um, that person three is trusting. So it's a zero here. And then if we look at our next array, which is who is being trusted. Um, so what we can count here is, okay, well, person one, nobody is trusting person one, nobody is per trusting person two, but person three has two people who are trusting them. So that's person one and person two. So 
do you see how we can now figure out that, okay, well, if I'm not trusting anyone, and if I have n minus 1 people trusting me, then I can clearly figure out who the judge is. So in this case, the judge is this person, index 3. Great, so I'm back in the code, and what I've done here is um, I have taken my trusting array, and I've set it to... Um, n plus 1 size because the index starts at 0 and we need to start um, accounting from 1 to n. So that's why I've done that and then for our trusted array I've just initialized it with the same length. Um, now what we're doing here is exactly how we discussed in our solution. So we are going from um, for each person 1 and person 2 in the trust. So what we're doing in the trusting we are putting um, a decrement in the person one because they are trusting someone else and in the trusted which is the person two we are just adding to their account so that's how we can tally up and see um, who is the judge in the end so this is the same um, manual step we did in our um, solution when we were drawing it out okay and the last thing we are doing here is just matching those two conditions. So if my trusting um, at that index is 0 and my trusted is equal to n minus 1, that means this person is the judge. So that's the um, solution. Now, what we can do is see if we can uh, solve this solution in a more optimal way by using only one array and not two arrays. So I will go ahead and show you guys um, how that optimization will work by just taking the solution and changing it to the one array solution. Okay, so the idea behind this optimization is really to um, account for all these plus one and minus one um, of the person in the same array. So how that would work is instead of having two arrays here, we can just change this to say um, trust count could be our name of our um, list here. So we can initialize it to um, n plus one, so from zero to n plus one. And we don't need this second array anymore. And the idea really is to um, account for each person in this trust count. So instead of separately counting what the person's trusted and trusting um, numbers are, we're just going to do that in this trust count array in the same position. So how do we do that? So again, we will loop through our person 1 and person 2 in trust, and then we will just account for that person's behavior, whether they're trusting or being trusted, um, in the trust count um, array here. So that's all we're going to do. And once that is in place, we can just, we no longer need to um, iterate over and check the both the arrays because the trust count index maintains the position for um, each person in that array and what their score is. So that's the idea of creating this in one array instead of two places. So if you notice here, our trust count for person one, um, so whatever that person one's index is, it's putting that value in the trust count index. So it's using indexing to um, keep track of what the trustability of each person is. And that's the basic idea behind um, this one array approach. And once we have that populated, then we all we need to check is if the judge um, is in our trust count so we just need to check if the so we don't need to check two things anymore two conditions because the 
addition and minus of that person have tallied up. So we just need to check if that um, judge in the trust count um, array that we have created is equal to n minus 1. And if that's the case, then we just return um, that index. And that's the judge index. And if no one is found, then we return negative 1. OK, so this looks OK. Let's see. Let's give this a try. So I've taken the um, same example here as our um, when we were discussing the solution. So let's go ahead and run this code. OK. So finished, yeah, so that's, yeah, so three is the judge here, and that's the answer we're looking for, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Okay, accepted, awesome. Thanks guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Okay, so the idea behind this optimization is really to um, account for all these plus one and minus one um, of the person in the same array. So how that would work is instead of having two arrays here, we can just change this to say um, trust count could be our name of our um, list here. So we can initialize it to um, n plus one. So from zero to n plus one. And we don't need this second array anymore. And the idea really is to um, account for each person in this trust count. So instead of separately counting what the person's trusted and trusting um, numbers are, we're just going to do that in this trust count array in the same position. So how do we do that? So again, we will loop through our person one and person two in trust, and then we will just account for that person's behavior, whether they're trusting or being trusted, um, in the trust count um, array here. So that's all we're going to do. And once that is in place, we can just, we no longer need to um, iterate over and check the both the arrays because the trust count index maintains the position for um, each person in that array and what their score is. So that's the idea of creating this in one array instead of two places. So if you notice here, our trust count for person one, um, so whatever that person one's index is, it's putting that value in the trust count index. So it's using indexing to um, keep track of what the trustability of each person is. And that's the basic idea behind um, this one array approach. And once we have that populated, then we all we need to check is if the judge um, is in our trust count so we just need to check if the so we don't need to check two things anymore two conditions because the addition and minus of that person have tallied up so we just need to check if that um, judge in the trust count um, array that we have created is equal to n minus one and if that's the case then we just return um, that index and that's the judge index and if no one is found then we return negative one okay so this looks okay let's see let's give this a try so I've taken the um, same example here as our um, when we were discussing the solution so let's go ahead and run this code okay so finished yeah so that's, yeah, so three is the judge here, and that's the answer we're looking for, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Okay, accepted, awesome. Thanks guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Alright, happy coding guys!